I recognize <laughs> I recognize Charles Cab. I recognize you from um, uh, your name over at Geek. We obviously like the same games. Tony Costa, I recognize. Uh, Patrick Hildreth, I recognize. Who, um, Matt K, is that Kirschenbaum? Oh, okay. Just a wild guess. Um, who, if you've, if you're brand new to this or, or really new to this, just, uh, just type new up in the, uh, up in the text box there so I can have an idea of, of who the oldies are. Okay. Wow, so we got a, a good crew here of guys who are who are new. All right. Um, as someone asked just a moment ago, I don't know who that was that was talking, but I went ahead and set up this is scenario one for the World War II campaign. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that because I don't speak French, but I'm sure Ben can step in and tell tell me how. Um, it is a uh, okay, Scott. Thanks. Uh, what is that? Three rows by four columns. Um, the first row by mission instructions is all potential contact C's, which are in general your least likely. Uh, the middle row is potential contact A's, and the, the top row up there uh, is potential contact B's. You'll notice that the card all the way up in the top left, as well as the third column, uh, first row, I have labeled as level two. I drew hills. Uh, whenever you draw a hill in this game for terrain, you'll draw another card. And so that's a wooded hill down here at the bottom and a uh, hillside farm, I guess, up there in the top left. So it's just easier for me personally to label everything I possibly can. So it gives you an idea of the map we're dealing with. Um, for this mission, uh, you choose uh, two objectives on that final row up there. Um, uh, you'll see that the woods there uh, the third card from the left is uh, the primary objective and the one adjacent to it there, the farm, is secondary. I chose that as a primary objective because if you look back down here uh, to the, the wooded hill, if I can get some firepower, namely the, the heavy machine gun, uh, the, the, the artillery forward observer up on that, that wooded hill, I'll be able to lay down some fire on the objective because we're expecting that that's going to be uh, pretty well defended. So um, this is our setup. Uh, we start with a standard platoon. Uh, each has a platoon headquarters uh, with uh, three full squads um, and then I've attached to each of them uh, the bazookas uh, that come along, the one, two, and three weapons, uh, and the first and second platoons. I've also attached 30 cows and then each platoon gets one rifle grenade, which has to be, as Chris pointed out in his excellent um, videos on the Board Game Geek, it has to be assigned to a specific unit at the beginning of the game. Uh, Joel has color-coded, or allowed you to color-code these things, uh, which is wonderful. It's just my habit. Uh, I will color uh, first platoon blue, uh, second platoon is red, and third platoon is that yellowish green color. Uh, my plan here, which rarely survives contact with the enemy, is I'm going to use second and third primarily um, to push forward and see what's out there and hopefully uh, keep first as intact as possible for the punch. And so we'll see how that goes. So if you have a question, um, I don't it's fine with me if you just break in and ask it verbally, uh, but for sake of, um, of the log, uh, if you could type it in, or if we could just have somebody who's a good typist um, to type in those questions so that we'll have them logged. So any questions, yeah, that does help most. Um, any questions right now before we get started? Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, if we move things around on our vessel, uh, is it going to mess it up for everybody? Do we need to keep hands off the keyboard on this thing with the synchronized mode? I haven't used this before. Yeah, yeah, um, we're all synced together, so like I just moved the first platoon off there and back on. If you did that, the same thing would happen. 
So. But, it, you know, if you want to check out something, just go for it. And if I look down, that's not where it's supposed to be. I'll, I'll know it was you. <laughs> you can mouse over. You can mouse over stuff, and it it won't mess up. Yeah, you can yeah, mouse over. Mouse. If you're not used to Vassal, if you'll just hover your mouse over, um, it'll show you what's in the stack from left to right, as bottom to top. So, and I'm a I've, no problem. I play advanced squad leader, and so I'm used to putting any kind of support weapon, etc., that is carried on top, because um, that makes sense to me. So when you see that rifle grenade, like for instance in the second platoon, uh, the first of the second is carrying the rifle grenade. So, All right, I will use, uh, as much as possible, I will use Joel's module um, to step through the sequence of play, uh, to deal with the activity level, um, and all that. Any questions before we get going? All right, we've got 10 turns. Uh, we need to clear at least the first two rows of all enemy, which means uh, ex <laughs> oh. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Um, we have to clear the first two rows of all enemies, which is at least, uh, which Joel's got me all flustered now. Um, not just enemies, but also a potential contact marker. So that's that's part of our objective. Uh, obviously, also, we want to capture the primary objective. We're going to try to clear the whole map and capture both objectives, capture the attack position, which is uh, uh, would only be normally two points for clearing a potential contact A, but if we capture the attack position, it'll give us a third point for experience. Now, there are a couple of rules that are going to be a little different. It's nothing major, but just some adjustments that um, uh, Ben is making uh, for the next volume. And so uh, one of those that I'm going to be using is a critical hit rule. Um, when drawing for grenades to hit, uh, if two grenade icons are drawn in the same draw, that's going to be considered a critical hit. And the way that's going to work, we're still testing this, but um, I like it personally. I've been using it in my games the last week, and I think it works. Uh, it's especially effective uh, when you're trying to root guys out of heavy cover um, uh, or, you know, heavy cover and in a... In a a card that's got a lot of cover as well. Uh, what it does when you get a critical hit is it it removes all positive terrain benefit from the uh, from the unit that's being hit. And so uh, we're going to be using that rule in particular. Uh, also, another rule involves bunkers and pillboxes. Um, we won't be running any pillboxes, but if my history holds, we'll be running into a handful of bunkers. And this one, and units that are in a bunker cannot fire into the uh, the, their own card um, and so that uh, according to Ben uh, who knows his stuff that allows for realistic tactics uh, not only in attacking the bunker you want to close with it use grenades but also uh, the enemy is going to have to have some flanking support to defend the bunker because once we get on card with it that unit's not going to be able to fire at us so those yeah yeah grenade checks that's the plan right now any grenade check yeah to signifies a, a especially good throw or shot. So you draw two two grenades and you get to as uh, all I know the boss is around here somewhere. I think all I know is that it's any time you you attempt a grenade attack. So we're gonna we're gonna use it for those for mortars as well, Joel. It's gonna become especially important when the Marines are introduced. Yeah. Yeah, I like it too, because you can run into, you know, guy's got plus six, plus seven, plus eight, depending on you. if he's in a village in a bunker, he's in, you know, plus six. Um, and it's awful tough to root those guys out, even with some pretty heavy firepower. So those are two things we're going to do. There may be another one I forgot, but when we run across it, I'll remember and share it with you then. So that's the way I roll. All right, any questions? Something comes up, just stop me. And um, and we'll talk about it. All right, it is turn one. Uh, we start with the friendly higher headquarter phase, which in turn one there is no draw for that, and so we'll 
skip straight through. This is not a defensive mission. I'm assuming everybody can see that purplish writing up there. So we'll skip through until we get to the friendly command phase. All right, the first part of this is, uh, is a, a two segment, uh, is an activation segment, and first part of that is the battalion headquarter impulse. He is not on map, so we will continue to the company headquarters. Now, our company headquarters is in communication with the battalion. That's important uh, to keep that line of communication open. That reminds me of something else I want to talk about. Um, ben, are you in here? Okay, I saw his name. He may not be around. Um, I usually, I'm used to using the field phones regardless of what the mission is, but had a had a really good phone conversation with Ben earlier, I guess it was earlier this week or late last week, and he talked quite a bit from experience about uh, communication, and part of that was that using a field phone in the attack is really not, uh, it's not illegal, it's perfectly within the rules of the game, but it's not terribly realistic and so we are not using the field phones if you look on the uh, command display up there if you just click on command display that won't interrupt my screen by the way Jim any of that uh, command display mission log notes and pyros that stuff it won't mess with my screen um, no problem uh, you'll notice that we are using the uh, SCR what is it 536 radios uh, man portable radios and they require line of sight uh, so uh, that kind of uh, crimps our communications just a little bit. So at any rate, back to what I was saying, the company is in communication with the battalion uh, headquarters via his SCR 300 on the battalion tactical network. And so we will go to action cards here. And I'm going to draw the cards out onto the map uh, because that way not everybody has to have the card one to open. And we are currently at no contact. Oh, that's wonderful. We're currently at no contact, and so that's going to add a plus one to our command draw. We're looking, uh, because it's the activation phase, we are looking at the number in the helmet, the big white number. Uh, our company headquarters is green, so that's a minus one, and then uh, there's no contact at this point, so that's a plus one, so that nets two commands for him. And so I'm going to go up here to my command display. i got to drag out my counters here. And we're going to mark right now two commands for our company headquarters. Now, he has to spin those right now. And so I need to decide who I'm going to use those on or what I'm going to use them on. The best way, or the most efficient way of using company headquarter commands is to use them in turn to activate uh, your platoon commanders, your uh, lieutenants, uh, so that they in turn can draw and use the big number. So the first platoon, I'm going to set his marker, and I'm in the command display right now if anybody wants to pop in there and watch. And I'm going to set, not first platoon, I'm sorry. Second platoon and third platoon are going to be activated. So that's one command each, so that expends all of company headquarters commands. So I'm going to move his marker and flip it over. I'm going to draw a card. I'll draw it out to the right again. This is for the second platoon headquarters. Uh, they have the same modifiers. They're green, which is a minus one, but there's no contact, which is a plus one. So that grants them a net zero, so three commands. And that was second platoon. And then I will draw a card for third platoon. They will get four commands. And I'll go ahead and discard these cards back. All right. Now, especially for the newer guys, now, if you'll open up the command display and notice, uh, with these green headquarters, um, the most commands that they can save, you, you can save up commands from turn to turn to hopefully, um, if you're trying to do some several things in one turn, or if there's nothing to do, it's never a bad idea to go ahead and draw for God and save up commands. They can only save, because they're green, during the day, they can only save three commands, and that's a severe limitation on their abilities to, to do things. So they can spend as many as six uh, in, a, in a day turn, and so let's say I've got three saved for second. Let's pretend I don't spend any this turn. I draw three more next turn. I could spend all six of those. If I drew five, for instance, I couldn't spend eight. I can only spend six. There's a limitation on how many they can save and how many they can spend. All right, what we're going to do... 
we have three commands for uh, second and uh, four commands for third. So I'm going to start with second. Now we're just going to push a single squad. It's going to cost me one command for him to order this first to the second who forgot the rifle grenade. Actually, let's not send them because they have the rifle grenade. Let's send the second and second. And I'll mark them exposed, which you can right click on the unit in this module and choose exposed, or you can just select him and hit control X. Alright, that uses up one command for the second. Thank you. I'm in the platoon and headquarter and a company staff impulse. Thank you, Mike. I'm gonna now I'm going to only spend that one command for the second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna save those other two. So I'll bring the save marker here. I'll move the activation marker and flip it. So he's done. Now, third platoon, we're going to do basically the same thing, but we're going to just skate the second or the third up into this gully. Mark him exposed. That's one command expended out of four, so that leaves three. I'm going to save those three for that rainy day that we know is coming. And that's all for uh, the activation segment. Activated second and third. Everybody else is going to have to draw on initiative. So we'll go to the initiative segment. The first part of that is the impulse for the company headquarters. He's already been activated, so he doesn't get an initiative segment. Two of my three platoon headquarters were activated, so they're done. But the first platoon was not, so we'll draw for first. Now when we draw on initiative, I'm going to draw a card out here. Same modifiers, but we're now using that smaller number. You see the three out here in the card I just drew. It's minus one for being green, but still plus one because there's no contact. So he will get three commands. And what he's going to do, because he's kind of our punch platoon, we're just going to save those. So I'm going to grab his save marker, stack it right there. Move his allocator marker up here and flip it to tell us that he's done. Discard his card. Now that's it for the platoons. Platoons are all, their headquarters are all done. Now the company staff, if they did not activate in the previous segment, in the initiative segment they automatically each get one, one command. And what I'm going to do for now is we're going to start storing up commands for these guys. So I'm just going to save them, move their allocated markers off, and flip them to complete. Now the last part of this command phase is the general initiative impulse. On this, we draw one card. We look at the small number. There are no modifiers. And of course, in this case, it's a big fat zero. So we get zero general initiative commands. That is Ricky Luck there. A general initiative are commands you can use on any unit. So what I was hoping for there is to draw a, a two at least a two and then that unit in the level two woods and that unit in the gully slash draw each of them I would they would use that initiative to seek cover um, but since I drew a zero we don't get to do that and so we move on that ends the command phase uh, this is enemy activity phase uh, there is no enemy higher headquarters segment on turn one there is there are no enemy out there right now so there's no activity checks there's nobody to capture or to retreat. There are no vehicles. And so now we go to the combat phase, which is multi-step. It begins right here in the volume of fire segment. We have no fire missions to, to uh, remove or to flip over. So now we'll ev uh, evaluate potential contact markers. And you'll see that we have entered two cards that have, and I'm going to call them PCs from now on, that have PCs on them. And the way this works is you always start with the the, the lower letter in the alphabet. So if I was on a B and a C, then we would resolve the B first. Since I'm on two C's, it's going to be randomized. So the gully draw, I'm going to call that card one. The woods, I'm going to call that card two. I will draw an action card, and this is where the random numbers come in at the bottom. If you look at the bottom, the green row with the white numbers, look under the two. That tells us that the random number is a one, 
And so card one, we're going to resolve first. So let me discard this back. Now, if you'll open up the charts, and if you'll click on enemy, enemy tab, or if you're on a Mac, I think it's a little arrow pointing one way or the other, and click on the drop-down box under uh, the last choice is potential contact draw. There's that chart that you've seen in your rule book. Um, it says type of PC marker, which in our case is a C. Uh, current level of activity is no contact, and that tells us right there how many cards we're going to draw to see if any of them have the word contact on. So we'll be drawing four cards. So I'm going to draw these out. Is, that, is everybody okay with me drawing the cards over to the right there? Does everybody see just beyond the right boundary? If not, just give me a shout in the text up there. Okay. All right, there's one. There's two. So far, so good. There's three, and there is four. All right, so we drew four cards. None of them said contact. So at this point, we will clear that PC from the map. That card is, for now, cleared and secured. So we only have one other to check. And we know, based on the chart, that we draw four cards because it's also a C. So we'll go one. There's our contact. Now, this is... <laughs> Joel's excited for us. This is important rule to remember in every case. If it says to draw four cards, if it says to draw seven cards, if you're doing a grenade check to draw two or three or whatever it is, even if you uh, even if you achieve success before you've drawn all the cards, you always draw all the cards it tells you to draw. So we, our first card tells us we're going to have we have a contact here, but we are going to go ahead and draw the other three. Two, three. Four. This keeps the deck cycling and helps the math to work out. So, all right, we have a contact. Now, you may have your briefing book up. Um, there's also, uh, I think, some charts in here. Not all the charts in here, but most of them are. But my briefing book I have up right here. I'm going to draw a card, and I'm going to look under the 10. You see under the 10 there uh, on this card, it has an 8. So now I'll go to my briefing book. Go to the enemy information, which is on page 5. Look under potential contact C, which is the type of PC we just tripped. And 8 of 10 tells us it is package 6, which are mines plus machine gun. That's exciting. So we'll scroll up to page 3. And we'll look at package 6. And it tells us that it will place a volume of fire marker and a PDF marker. In this case, it will, the HMG nest will be spotted. And then don't look at placement right now. But look at the last part. It's going to be mines plus a heavy machine gun team under foxholes. So we know the mines appear on our card by rule. So let me go ahead and place those. I think I can get them from the VOF there, mines. And we'll deal with them in just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jim's excited too. All right. Now we're going to draw another card and look under the 10 to see where that heavy machine gun is going to be placed. Under the 10, it tells us it's a 5. So we go back to the briefing book, back to page 5, and look there at the bottom. It says unit placement. It says on a 5 of 10, we put it to our front at maximum line of sight. Now we're on a hill. So we see over the farm, we see over the objective, we can see one more card. If you remember the rules, you can see all the way out to V, three cards distance. So we're going to actually need to draw a terrain card here and place it right there. So we're already extending the map. Uh, Scott, uh, the 10 column, that's, uh, that's just by rule. Anytime you're checking to see what the PC becomes uh, or where it's placed, um, you always check on the 10 because there's 10 options in every table. So that way you can get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. If you look at the tables on page 5, okay. All right, let me flip this over and see what we've got. Okay, he is in the hedgerow. Now I have to go back to my briefing book to find out what he is. 
Alright, he's a heavy machine gun team. Foxholes. Alright, so I go up to my units here. No, ma'am, I did not. So we're going to take the one HMG, put him here. We're going to place cover, which still tells us it is foxholes. Although in this particular mission, their standard standard cover for the Germans um, is trenches. This specifically said foxholes. So we place them in foxholes. Now a couple more things we need to do. Uh, whenever you trigger a unit, an enemy unit, uh, he is firing at the unit that triggered him. So I'm going to have to place some PDFs here. Now one thing I would love for us to do, I don't know if Ben's listening, but in future volumes to have a some PDF counters that actually say long range PDF. That way you... Oh, thank you. That way you know that it's, it's coming from more than one card away. All right. Now, last thing here is for me to put an automatic weapons volume of fire marker on my card. Hey, Ricky, can I interrupt you real quick? A quick question. The card yeah, who's talking? Yeah, Mike, the, the, the two... Okay, the go, card, ahead, Mike, go ahead, Mike. The card that you drew has two white borders. Can can there be a set... Would that be one card further away, or does it stop with only one card? No, uh, uh, line of sight only extends three cards, regardless. <clears throat> yeah, line of sight doesn't extend infinitely. No problem. Okay. Does everybody see what we've done here? We've triggered a... All right, Magdog, uh, uh, yeah, I can explain line of sight. <clears throat> now, does everybody see the labeling I have on this Woods card where we're at level two, so we can see over anything? So there's no issue with card borders or anything like that with this particular line of sight. Line of sight uh, in normal visibility, norm, normal daytime visibility extends out to three cards, which is what's called very long range. Uh, same card as point blank, that's your P notation. One card away is C for close, two cards away is L for long, and three cards away is V for very long. Um, now, if you look at the cards, you'll note uh, a good example is the card that's on um, the first row, right to our left here, the gully draw where our other unit is. You'll notice that some of the borders are dark, like the left and right side of that gully are dark and that the top and bottom of that gully card are light. Um, line of sight in this game, uh, when it crosses a dark border, it stops in that card that has the dark border. Now the corners, you'll notice the corners of the cards also will have dark or light borders. If you look at the very bottom right, the open fields, you'll notice that not only are the or the sides all white, but also the corners are white, so line of sight goes straight through that sucker. Now, line of sight in this game also only runs um, uh, in straight directions, and what I mean by that is it only runs orthogonally and diagonally. There is no, quote, night move line of sight. So, for instance, I'm sitting on this wooded hill right now with my dude that's getting shot at. If you look to the third row up there where the Orchard Grove is. Does everybody see me moving this B contact marker up here, this card? I have no line of sight to that card because it's not on the diagonal and it's not straight ahead or not straight side to side. Does everybody understand that? So even though I'm on this hill, yeah, it's only along the diagonals and in orthogonal directions. It's never any kind of night moves at all. So we sprung this heavy machine gun. He's firing at us with an automatic weapons volume of fire from a great distance away. 
he is spotted. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire at him. But you know what's really funny about that? We can't reach him. But we've just trudged up this hill in the woods. He's firing at us. Now we're just firing at him with all we have. And we can't reach him because our range only goes through these woods right here. So one of those, not terribly rare situation, but it happens from time to time. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark this heavy machine gun. He has eight ammo, and I will label him. That's what I love about the... Um, Vassal module, because I can label everything. Uh, German HMGs in this one have eight ammo. <laughs> That's exactly right. We're firing away, just trying to save our cans. And even though he's out of effective range, if we were burnt, yeah, we'd be burning ammo. So we would need to use some of our commands. Yeah, we'd be using some of our commands to. <clears throat> to get those guys to stop firing, maybe to move them out of line of sight or whatever. So, All right, let me discard these cards. Now, one more thing we need to do because we moved into mines. As you notice on that mines volume of fire marker, I have to draw three cards here. It says mines draw three. If any of them have a burst on it, then that means we're going to get hit by the mines in the combat phase. All right, so I'll bring up the cards. Draw one. Draw two. Draw three, so we have avoided getting hurt by those mines. Yeah, I always get hit by the mines. Now, note that this is fairly rare in this uh, World War II missions, uh, and most missions, in fact, for an enemy to appear spotted. And so we're a little bit fortunate that we already see that guy, although he's a great distance away. Um, we don't have to waste a lot of commands trying to to spot him. So, all right, we've evaluated all the potential contact markers. We have survived the mines. So we move on to combat effects, and our card is the only one uh, that has any uh, any VOFs on it and units. And so we're going to do a little bit of math. Um, as you'll notice we're in the woods, uh, which grants us a plus two, which is good. Uh, but we moved in there, uh, and that's a minus two for being exposed, so that nets out to zero, and then a minus one uh, for his automatic weapon. So that's a final minus one, and so I'll draw an action card. I should have already changed the contact marker, Mad Dog. We should be at contact. Let me go ahead and do that up here now. Activity level goes to contact. All right. So we look here, what we're at minus one, and you'll notice on this card that I just drew that minus one tells us that we have been hit. Uh, and so I will now draw a card to see what happens to us. All the squads in this mission are line quality. So we're going to look under hit effect, line, and that's a C. That tells us that one step of our three-step squad is going to become a casualty. So we immediately got hammered there. So I'm going to move this exposed marker for a second. I'm going to flip him over to his two-step side. I'm going to add a casualty. And I'm going to set the casualty off to the side right here because he's effectively an asset that has to be transported now. And then I need to mark him pinned. Any hit result you get automatically is also a pin. All right. So that ends the combat effects segment. That's all the combat we have to do. The only thing I need to do now is go up here to our bad guy. I need to decrement his ammo from 8 to 7. So, Lord willing, he only gets 7 more shots at us. <laughs> I'll discard these cards. Cleanup phase, which in this module is real easy. You hit cleanup, it removes all the stuff that goes with at the end of the turn, which is exposed markers, smoke. Um, any other power techniques. Now we go to turn two. All right. So far, so good. Questions?
yeah, levels of contact. You start at no contact. And there's a chart here that's actually doesn't have the errata on it. But if you go into the charts, click the charts button, go to enemy, back to potential, potential contact draw, you'll see the uh, activity levels below that little chart. No contact means there's no volume of fire, no PDF markers on the map, and no spotted enemy units. Um, once a, a, an occupied card, what are you saying, Jim? Okay, Jim asked, how did we know the machine gun came on spotted? If you go to the briefing book, um, we spawned package six. So if you go to page three of the briefing book, Look at package six. It's mines plus HMG nest. First column there after that says place volume of fire PDF yes. The next column says unit spotted. The answer is yes. And so they came on spotted. That's how we knew. Now contact is when there's one occupied card under volume of fire marker. Now the errata, you take out all references to, to friendly under contact and engaged. So that should read one occupied card is under a volume of fire, fire marker. Engaged is two or more occupied cards under volume of fire markers. And then heavily engaged is engaged plus at least one card has uh, good guys and bad guys on it. Yeah. Yeah, we're technically not engaged. We think we are. Psychologically we're engaged, but we're really not engaged. We're still dating. <coughs> All right. Any other questions? No, we only had two little things to the, actually three little things to the to the sequence of play this time. And the first thing is now the friendly higher headquarter phase starts to come into effect starting with turn two. So I'm going to draw a card. And right there to the left of that tank where it says AT8, if there was a little radio that said HQ, that would mean that we would be uh, having to draw to see what the event was, but since there wasn't one of those, we don't have to do that. So we'll skip on ahead. This is not a defensive mission, so none of that stuff that says defensive applies. So we go to the friendly command phase, activation segment. We know battalion's not on maps, so we go straight to the company headquarter. Yeah, we have 10 turns. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, <coughs> Company headquarters is in contact with uh, battalion, so he is able to be activated. So he will draw. Huh, this is not good. All right, you remember last turn we, we were at no contact, so that gave us a plus one to our command draws, and we were green, which gives us a minus one. Bad news now is we don't get the plus one for no contact, but of course we're still green. So that two on that card suffers a minus one for being green, so our CO gets one command. So I will put that command allocated down here. <laughs> yeah. Spin wisely. Dave Ramsey is my CO. All right, let's see here. I tell you what we're going to do. How many's first have? First has three from initiative. Second has two. Third has three. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to use that one to activate third platoon. So the CO is done. We move on to the platoon headquarters and company staff impulse. And now this is still the activation phase, so the only one that's going to be drawing is that third platoon, because we used our one command to activate that one headquarters. So the third platoon is going to activate, and that means he gets to draw. Excuse me, let me discard this. He gets to draw and use the big number, minus one because he's green. So that's a four, minus, three, minus one means he gets three commands. So... He's got some saved ones. He's got three saved ones and three new ones. So that's a grand total of six right now. now. He has to spend those during this phase, and he's the only one spending. So we'll go ahead and go down here and look. Now, that gully draw is a pretty safe place to be right now because the 
second of the third went up there earlier and um, scaled it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a platoon move. And everybody in command in that platoon moves. You don't get a choice to leave somebody behind. So let's say that in a mission you attach the 50 cal to your first platoon and you want to do a platoon move but leave behind the 50 cal, you don't get to do that. He goes with you. So you're going to have to find a way uh, to get around that. Ben said that's realistic, so we trust Ben. All right, we're going to go ahead and mark him exposed. And that costs two commands to move them up there. So I'll move that allocated marker from a three to a one. Now, I usually do this with my third. I usually kind of use them to sweep. And so now that the platoon headquarters is up there um, with that second of the third, and that second of the third hasn't moved, He's going to order them to move over here into these woods to clear out those woods of any uh, possible enemy. So that spins one more. I'm going to save the remainder of thirds. If you look under that first platoon saved, you just double click on it, you'll see it expand. And under there is the thirds three saved from last turn. So he's going to hold on to those other three for now. All right, nobody else activated. We move on to initiative. Uh, company headquarters already activated. Platoon headquarters, uh, the first. Oh, thank you. Didn't expose this guy. He's doubly exposed. There. All right, uh, first platoon. <laughs> That's right. And second platoon did not activate, so they get to draw for initiative. Now you'll notice first has three saved and second has two saved. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to draw for first first. And we're looking at the smaller number, and it's a minus one because they're green. So first is going to get one more command. So we'll take our allocated marker for first and put it there. And I'm going to draw a card now for... Second, that's a four minus one for three. That's a great initiative draw. So second gets three to add to his saved two. All right, now they had to spin those during this impulse before we move on to the company's staff part of the impulse. So let's see what we have here. Obviously, second is not real interested in jumping up there into the mines. And the guy who's stuck in the mines is out of command. And so I can't command him with any of that right now. He's on, he's going to work under his own initiative. Um, I could infiltrate into that card because it has a volume of fire marker on it, but that'd be kind of stupid. I'm just, uh, I'd be tempting fate. And so as much as I hate to do it, I'm not moving into open fields over there. That's not a happy place. <clears throat> As much as I hate to do it, um, second is is going to end up sitting still and losing those three commands. Because remember, as a green headquarters, he can only carry over or say three commands from turn to turn. That's why it's really important once you get experience to spin that experience first. <sighs> Joel, I'm sending Joel to go scout the fields. <clears throat> I don't like the fields. I'm going to wait till the contact level gets high enough to where... Uh, what's that? Jim, so he can save one more? Uh, that was second. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was second. So second, save one of those. The other two are lost. You're right. All right, first platoons in a similar circumstance. If everything would have worked out really well, what I would have done... Um, is I would have probably moved first through those woods as well. Uh, but since we found mines there and we're getting shot by a heavy machine gun, um, they're going to just um, end up wasting that one command. And they still have three saved from earlier. So that's kind of a wash right now. So we'll move a turn up to company staff impulse. Remember, this is the initiative segment. In the initiative segment, the first sergeant and the EXO, if they did not activate, they get one each. So I'm going to probably save those, but let me double check the map here. Uh, 
Yeah, we're going to save those for now. It's never a bad thing to hang back for a bit and save commands. <clears throat> yeah, it would take two orders. <clears throat> I'm going to wait. <clears throat> I don't know, wait. I've learned to be cautious in my old age here. Joel's asking. Yeah. Joel's asking uh, if, about forming an assault team. Uh, it would take one to detach an assault team and then one more to push him forward into the field. So let's see what happens the rest of this turn and maybe we'll, we'll do that. <clears throat> Yeah, see, Ben bum rushes because he's a Marine. I'm a preacher, so you know, there's a little difference there. All right, any questions here, guys? Where are we? Staff impulse. We're just saving those for now. So general initiative. Uh, what I want to do here is get hopefully get two. Uh, if I can get two, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that uh, second of the second out of there. And um, and also uh, draw for a uh, seat cover over here in the woods. So I draw for general initiative. I draw one card. Look at the little number, which gives us two. There are no modifiers to this. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Mark us both. Um, so there's no modifier to this. We get two commands, and any units can use these commands. Any unit. So I could use a headquarters, could move, or uh, somebody uh, could seek cover, which is what we're going to do over here. Um, so this guy who is in the woods, uh, he's already exposed, but you're allowed to seek cover uh, when exposed. And so he is going to use one of the two general initiative commands to seek cover. Now, look at the card here, especially new guys. Uh, the woods card at the bottom, there's a graphic of a little hand of cards, and it has a number four in it. That tells us how many cards we get to draw, the base number of cards we get to draw to seek cover. Uh, that will be modified um, by if we're green, that will be minus one. If we're veteran, it will be plus one, but we're a line squad, so we're going to draw those four. Now, over in the left corner, you'll see what's a little bush or tree. Uh, it tells you basically what kind of cover it is, which is natural. Um, and that tells you the maximum number of cover markers that can ever be on the card. So this card can end up having a maximum of three cover plus one markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my action cards. I'm going to ah, discard that guy. I'm going to draw four. One, and we're looking for it to say cover on it. Two, nope, rally but not cover. Three, all right, that's my reshuffle. So I'll go ahead and... Reshuffle everything into the deck. Now, it's only two because the reshuffle was the third one. So this is three, and this is four, so we find no cover. So that's one of our two general initiative commands. Our other general initiative command, we're going to use the pin guy in the mines. is going to get out of there, and he's going to come back. I hate going back to the staging area, but sometimes you need to. That removes the enemy. You assume that the enemy uh, orders its own units to cease fire. And so I'll remove all that. Now, if the roles were reversed, guys, if we were firing at an enemy that disappeared, our guys don't automatically stop firing. We actually have to give them orders to stop firing in that case. They will keep firing until they either A, run out of ammo, or B, we tell them to stop. And we just have to assume that the AI... Uh, has noticed we've left, and they've issued. They've used some of their commands to tell us to tell their units to stop firing. So that's all for general initiative. All right, it's now time for the bad guys. Now they also have a higher headquarter phase. Yeah, you can move with the pin marker, but there are limitations upon where you can move. Um, in fact, I think that's in the vassal charts. Joel, is it in the vassal charts? It may or may not be. No, not when you leave. Mines do not attack you when you leave. It's when you enter the card or when you move within the card. So let's say that that guy, instead of leaving the card, sought cover and found it. 
uh, then he's going to hit the mines or possibly hit the mines again. But leaving, and you just assume he's getting back. Are they in there? Lat limitation. There you go. Yeah, click on the charts. Uh, who is asking the question? Phil? Well, click on the charts button and command, and the, the fourth one down is lat. That's limited action team, lat limitations. And it will tell you the type of lat, which in this case it's a pinned, uh, which is the first one in the chart. It tells you what kind of volume of fire it produces, and then actions allowed. And in this case, the pin guy can move to an adjacent card, but only if that card is a staging area or is friendly occupied and has no volume of fire on it. So, yeah, they can move. They just have severe limitations. All right, buddy. All right, so he's out of there for now. Uh, now we're back to the enemy higher headquarters. Now I'm going to draw a card, and we're looking that same spot next to the tank to the left to see if there's a uh, radio. Uh, yeah, it did change. Mad Dog's asking if the contact level changed or activity level, and it did change. Mad Dog's better at keeping up with that than I am. Now that mines card <laughs> counts. Uh, that mines counter counts as volume of fire. So let's look back at our chart real quick. Enemy potential contact draw. Contact is one friendly one occupant card is under volume of fire marker. That's not true. No volume of fire or PDF markers on the map, and no enemy unit spotted. That's not true. So we don't have enough to drop from contact to no contact. So technically, yes, we remain in contact. But that's a good thought. All right, this card I just drew has no headquarters symbol on it, and so there is no event for the bad guys, which is uh, usually a good thing. Although sometimes they run away. Yeah, activity check. Um, this guy, let's see. He is, if you'll go to enemy and go to enemy defensive activity hierarchy, that's the chart we're interested in at this point. He's the only enemy on the map. And so we don't have to do any randomizing to see who acts first. And we're looking at this chart, and you'll notice at the top of the chart it says uh, random numbers by defensive tactics. This particular mission, they are under deliberate defense. And so we're looking all the way to the right. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at the top of the chart, and you're going to look at the status. And uh, the first status, going from top to bottom, that applies specifically to that unit you're checking, that's the, that's the chart you use. So this guy's not on the same card as this unit. Uh, he is an A unit, uh, but he's not marked out of ammo. All right, here we are, not under fire and no line of sight to U.S. unit. Now, here's another reason Ricky moves out of this guy's line of sight, because that tells us he automatically is removed. So I will just delete him, because in Vassal, he's still in here. And he's gone. He's melted back into the hedgerow. And so he's not a problem anymore, uh, but the mines are. So capture and retreat, there's nothing to do. There's no vehicles or aircraft. Mutual combat phase, VOF segment. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is check to see if there are any of my units that are pinned but not under volume of fire marker. And that applies to my two-step squad down here in the staging area. He is pinned and not being fired at. And so that will be removed automatically. No fire missions to update. Yeah, the foxhole stays. Uh, no, yeah, there is one PC to evaluate probably get some new bad guys here. All right, you see over here in the woods, we got my dude that moved over there and couldn't find any cover. Uh, so potential contact C. So look under enemy, PC draw. C, excuse me, when we're at contact level of activity, we draw three cards. So I will draw one. There's my cover, too late. Two. There's more cover too late. Three. So no contact over here. This is such an easy game. All right. So that card has been cleared. So far, we're not moving really fast, but we're doing okay. No combat effects here. Nothing to do. Nobody's shooting. Cleanup phase. Remove exposed markers, etc., etc. 
yeah, mine's on the hill. That was going to be my spot, but oh well. Yeah. All right. Questions. We're about to get a little bit more active. Any questions before we move on here in turn three? I just had a quick question. The assault team that Joel mentioned earlier, I'm not quite clear on what 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 is what is what do assault teams do, and why would forming one have been a potential idea? Uh, assault team is it's a one step limited action team. Um, uh, the thing about the assault team is we can we can split off an assault team or we can split off a fire team from a from a, a multi-step squad. We would just flip the squad over to its two-step side and we would split off those guys as a one-step team. Well, the advantage of an assault team is the assault team is allowed to to advance. Fire teams are not allowed to effectively to advance and to to scout. Assault teams are able to scout. So the advantage there is we're only risking one step of a squad going into that open field instead of risking the full squad going into that open field. So that's probably what we're going to do this time. Um, uh, first platoon's got enough commands. It's got its maximum save, and Lord willing, it'll get some more uh, when we activate it here in a minute. Um, and then we'll push a, an assault team forward, and we'll see what happens. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. All right. Friendly higher headquarter phase. All right, we draw a card. There is no icon for that, so battalion's not going to be demanding silly reports, which is good. Um, you know how those lieutenant colonels can be. <clears throat> All right, this is not a defensive mission. Friendly command phase, activation segment. Battalion Headquarter Impulse. Battalion is not on map, so we skip straight to the company headquarters who is in contact with the battalion. Uh, and he will draw a card and look at the big number, which is a four. And remember, he's green, so it's minus one. And technically, we're still at contact. That line's VOF is keeping us at the level, activity level of contact. So we no longer get the plus one for no contact. So it's four minus one, gives our CO. Let me flip these back over. Is our CO three commands with which to work? What he's going to do with those three commands is he's definitely going to activate first. He's definitely going to activate third. Somebody have a question? Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and draw for third platoon here. They get five minus one for four. My goodness, we're all of a sudden a wash and commands. And the first sergeant, now first sergeant is line quality, so there is no negative modifier for him. So he'll also get four commands. And because he's line quality, you'll notice on the chart, he can save as many as six. So he can save twice as many uh, if it comes to it. So these cards, I'll discard to get them out of the way. All right, now, as we were talking about earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first. And it's going to take two commands to do this. So we're going to take the third of the first. And we're going to detach from them an assault team. So I'll do that right there. And I also need to flip them over to their two-step side because they have detached a step. I'll put him back in the stack. Now that costs one command, which I'll adjust in just a minute. <laughs> Sergeants have better memories. And for the second command, he's going to be ordered to advance into those open fields, about which he is incredibly pleased, by the way. So that uses two of first platoons. Now they have three saved, plus those two remaining. They still have five. Thanks for coming by, Ben. 
All right, so we'll check out that marker there. Now we're going to skip over to third for just a minute. <clears throat> now notice this, guys. Within the same, and actually we're in the this impulse now, platoon headquarters and staff. Within the same impulse, you can go back and forth and, and expend commands. So I activated first, I activated third, and I activated first sergeant. So if I wanted to, I could spin a couple commands of first, then I could spin one from third, then go back and spin one from first, and the sergeant could spin a couple, then go back and spin one from third, as long as it's within the same impulse. Now once we move on to the next impulse, these guys are done. They can't do anything else until it comes to general initiative, and they could use those. But So they need to spin it all now, but they don't have to spin them all in order. All right, so third's going to act now, and like we did earlier, they're going to get the platoon connected again. So for two of those commands, I'll move that over. Third is going to make a platoon move over here. We'll mark them exposed. Now this is where it's going to get hairy when we start hitting these A's. We're going to go ahead and push forward into this hedgerow. He's going to order the second of the third here into the hedgerow bocage. And we'll mark him exposed for that move. And that spins another one of thirds. Yeah. Yeah, A's is almost certain at certain contact levels, at, at level of no contact and the level of simple contact, A's are automatic. That means they're going to automatically um, find something in there. And usually it's, it's not nice. All right, I, I really don't want to waste that that other one of thirds. Um, but at this point, uh, I would just be using it to use it. So third is done. First has two. And uh, Mad Dog was right. That poor old cash to up there is probably going to be there the whole game. because it's not worth it to try to go in there and, and pull him out. I know that's an awful thing to say, but those mines are nasty. And they will uh, wound up with more casualties in there than we get out. So we're just going to have to leave him be. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to use these other two at first. Since our plan has already um, been fried, we're going to use that hill right there to bear down on the contact. We're going to... Uh, Platoon move from there to there, from one staging area card to another staging area card. You don't mark them exposed in the staging area because there's no fire into or out of it. There are no stacking limitations in the staging area either. And so we're just going to move him to there, expend those two commands, which I think is a decent use. We're going to kind of swing him around to the other side of the map. All right, so first is done, third is done. Now, first sergeant has four commands. Which guys, Mad Dog? Mad Dog's asking if we should try to get guys into cover now. Yeah, we could, but we don't. Um, we don't have enough commands to get everybody in cover. And the thing about, yeah, yeah, you talking about the? Um, uh, we'll do that. You talking about the third platoon? You talking about in the open fields? Actually, I was kind of thinking about both of them. Oh, can't hear you. Hold on a second. A uh, third platoon, um, there's not enough commands. I got, I've got, it would take four commands for everybody to try. Wait, how many did I have? I had four, didn't I? Yeah, I had four. That may not be a bad idea. But here's the thing, if some get in and some do not, um, uh, whoever's not in the same cover or non-cover situation as the headquarters is not in, not in visual verbal command. And so whatever he orders, unless it's a ceasefire um, or a shift fire, which affects the entire card regardless, whatever he orders, they're not going to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Hold on. It's a good question. I sometimes forget what I can and can't do with exposed. No, there's not a platoon move for that, and there's not a platoon seat cover either. And so, yeah, either way, I could spend all four of these, but I'm not going to. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably regret that. Um, but we're going to save those for the eventual rallying that's going to have to happen. Um, those guys are going to be okay for now uh, because that potential contact A is going to pop up there in the hedgerow. He's going to target that squad. Whatever it is that comes out is going to target that squad that moved in there. So we will have a chance to, to get settled in there uh, before we have to start laying down some fire. Yeah, no platoon move to cover, no platoon seek cover. We can talk bad about Ben, though, because he, he's gone now, so feel free. All right, so first is done. Third is done. First sergeant is down where the first was. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about that. Now, what do I have here? I've got open fields and slow... I can go there, there. Yeah, I'm going to move him here for one. And he can go ahead and embark. So that uses two. Where's his saved marker? So he had two saved. He had two left over, so he now has four saved. He's done for the turn. All right, so that's all our activated guys. The initiative segment coming to headquarters has already been activated. We do have one platoon, the second, that was not activated, so they will act on initiative. So I'll draw one card for them. Look at the little number, which is a three. Subtract one because they're green, so that's two. Um, they're going to go ahead and get in a fight here. They're going to use two of those, those two to platoon move to right there. That will expose them. And they still had the three save from earlier. So they used their two initiative ones. The XO was not activated. So he gets his one. Let's look at him for a second. Um, he's going he's gonna to hang fire. He's going to hang fire for now. So he'll save that one. He's done. Now, general initiative, I'm going to draw a card. Look at the little number. No modifiers. It's a two, so we get two general initiative commands. Uh, the dude in the open fields, it's not a real, real good chance here, but he's going to try to find cover. If you look down there at the bottom, he gets to draw two cards to seek cover. He's line qual. Uh, yeah, salt teams are line quality. Oh, we got the first draw, but we still draw the second one. So that's going to help a little bit. So I'll put a cover plus one marker on there. And you note in the bottom left, it's got the bushes with a little one there. That's the only cover marker that this card can have, is that one. One cover marker right there. All right, so that's going to help him a little bit. And hopefully that C won't pop and shoot at him. Okay. All right. What I, when we last left our intrepid heroes, we were um, we just finished our initiative. We'd drawn two commands. The dude in the open fields was able to successfully find a little bit of cover, and then I loaded or not loaded the uh, first sergeant activated the jeep to move. Um, and you'll notice that that cost of command, he used the other general initiative command to do that. Cost of command, all you do in the case of a vehicle is you, you put an activated marker on it. And it will move later in the vehicle uh, vehicle and aircraft phase, which is 3.6, I believe. So we are just waiting a minute here for 
for the rest of the guys to show up as we go on to uh, enemy activity. Which there is no enemy currently on the map, but old grannies there's about to be. Somebody just disappeared. Do I need to close out a vassal to resync? Because I'm not able to resync with you, Ricky. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes that helps. Go ahead. We'll, we'll wait on you. I think there's two Rickies in my list right now, and I had to sync with the second one to get it to work. It's twice, twice the goodness, actually. Yeah, that's one of Vassal's. That's yeah. one of the Vassal yeah. servers' little things that'll do that. If you if you drop and have to resync, sometimes you'll see two of everything. Yeah, I, I see two of me too, so. Yeah, the one under Joel's name um, is probably the actual. I don't see that one under Joel, and the one I'm trying to sync to is not working. Huh. Yeah, the one under the road is good. There's two Joels in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's both the bottom ones. The ones above that are only reasonable effects, anyways. Yep, that worked. All right, Scott, you good? Almost. Hold on. Okay. Yep, that worked. Uh, I had to be in the game room for some reason. I was still in the lobby or in the main one. Ah. Uh. Okay. All right. Uh, we're moving to enemy activity, which is going to start with their higher headquarters segment. So we're going to draw a card looking for the... Still haven't had an event, which is good. You notice on there there's no, no radio with the HQ notation. So move on. Enemy activity check. There are no enemies on board to check right now because our HMG melted back in the woods. Nothing to capture retreat. Now we get to move our Jeep. Which normally I wouldn't do this, but Joel tempted me. So, um, so I'm going to move. And vehicles in this game can move as far as you want them to. If they come to a card that says slow, they have to stop. Cards that say no, they can't move into it at all. So moving this vehicle, I only have one choice to move into the fields, which is actually kind of stupid. Um, so we're just going to move him right back out. So that's that. There, Joel, you satisfied? So he's moved and fired. All right. Mutual combat phase, VOF segment. Um, if there was anybody pinned at this point, not under VOF any longer, we would remove the pin marker, but that's not the case. No fire missions to update. All right. Evaluate potential PCs. Now, we are on a card with an A right here on uh, row 2, column 2. And we're on a card with a C. Uh, you check the lowest number in the alphabet or lowest letter first. Um, so that A is going to be checked first. And if you'll bring up your charts, go to enemy and potential contact draw, you'll notice that in the current state in which we find ourselves, which is contact, actually it's not automatic. We draw seven cards to see if there's a contact. So one, two, three, Four, suspense is killing you. Five, six, it always happens on the seventh card. Oh! Hey. Now, that is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. But, we'll take it. And then, same chart, C, I believe, is three cards. Now, here's where we'll get something nasty. Watch. For that C down there, one, two, 
three. Wow. Well, this World War II thing's turned out a lot better than I thought it would. All right, combat effects. There's nothing. Cleanup phase. We'll just hit the little cleanup button. Hey, Ricky. Why were we still yep. in contact? Yeah. Because of the mines? Yep. If you look at the, let's look at the chart. We'll walk through it. Uh, go to charts, enemy, potential contact, draw, and look at activity levels. We reached contact because we ended up with one card occupied under a volume of fire marker. Now that volume, that card is no longer occupied, but we do not yet meet the requirements to go back to no contact because no contact is no volume of fire markers on the map and no enemy units spotted. So that mines marker is going to stay there forever and ever and ever to the end of time. So we will never go back to no contact in this mission. So it's considered an enemy unit, the mines? It's considered a volume of fire marker. It is something that is causing enough havoc uh, uh, at least having to consider it that um, it is a drain on command resources. That's the best way I know how to say it. Thanks. It has an effect. On, yeah, it has an effect. How do you stack a deck? <laughs> well, Chris, uh, I'll talk to you later. That's going to cost you. All right, we are now at turn four, and we only have one casualty, which I think is a world record for me. All right, friendly higher headquarter phase. I'll draw a card. Nothing. Yeah, I did move the Jeep back to the staging area because I was scared to death to leave them exposed in the open fields. <laughs> Alright, this is not defensive mission, so we'll skip right to the friendly uh, the command phase, the company headquarter impulse of the activation sector. Let me flip all my guys here back over. That should have been moved off earlier. Mad Dog reminded me, but I forgot. Now we will draw one card for our company headquarters and subtract one because he's green, so that two becomes a one. He gets one command this time. Alright, first, second, and third have three commands each. Tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate third, and my plan is to move the whole platoon up to the hedgerow to rejoin the second and the third, and he's going to push the second and the third ahead into that farm right there. And we'll see what happens, see if we can stir up a hornet's nest. Alright, so back to the command display. He spins his one. We'll flip him over to activate the third platoon. Third platoon will draw. And he gets three minus one. He gets two commands. And I'm not going to mark that because I'm immediately going to spin those two new ones to platoon move into the head dribble cage. And then I'm going to spend one of his saved ones. Where's that marker? So that knocks him down to two saved to order these guys into the farm, which will also expose them. <clears throat> and he is going to be done for now. So we have eyeballs on the objective. <clears throat> and we're close to the attack position. Alright. Initiative segment. Our company headquarters are activated. Because I'm trying to get killed, Joel. That's why I'm not going to the objective. Because <clears throat> some of these guys are thinking, this is the easiest game ever. <clears throat> and we're going to show them why it's not the easiest game ever. <laughs> Actually, this may not be a bad idea, but I'm going to have to clear that A out anyway. So, it may be smarter to jump the objective and and then have uh, uh, PDFs coming in from all directions, but I never claim to know how to play well. All right, first and second platoon. We're going to draw initiative commands. 
in the platoon headquarter initiative impulse of the initiative segment. So first draws gets two minus one for one new one. Second draws and gets two minus one also for one new one. Get those cards out of our way. All right. Let's just let's just go crazy. Second's going to spend one to send their deuce squad on the scouting mission right there. He's going to save rest. <clears throat> yeah, they can. Uh, they are not in command, though, Jim. Jim asked that the assault team in the open field can move. And they, they can move, but only right now under general initiative. They don't have a radio. Um, they're not in command at all, so they would have to wait and hopefully use one of the general initiative commands. If I could draw at least one, it may be a good idea to, uh, to move them somewhere. Yeah, no radio. Only my headquarters and my company staff um, have radios, as, along with the, the FO. Um, who else? That's it, I guess. All right, where was I? All right, first platoon. One, three, six, seven, eight, nine. You can only have um, 16 steps on a card plus four vehicles. Three, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So if I wanted to move all of first platoon up there, I could not. But we're kind of crazy. So we're going to move all of 1st Platoon straight into this cover marker. That's a platoon move. Let me mark them exposed. I'll put the assault team on top because they are not exposed. That use my one new command and one of my save commands. So we'll drop that down to two. Now no, you can platoon move. No, move into cover is um, is a is a different action than a move. A move is from card to card. Move into cover is a specific action that means you are moving on the same card from out of cover into cover or or into cover out of cover. So whenever you move from one card to another card, you can always move into cover. Um, on that, if there's cover on that card, you can move from cover on one card to cover on another card. It's just there is no platoon move into cover. That was just a platoon move, and I chose to move them straight into the cover. All right, what I am going to do here is I'm going to spin one more, um, Jim. Instead of sending that assault team out, I'm going to spin one more, and that platoon headquarters is going to order that assault team to rejoin that squad. So that squad. comes full strength again and I get rid of that assault team. So my first is in great shape. Um, except they're all exposed in cover. Alright. So that means he has one save left and he is done. Alright, so all my platoon headquarters have, have acted. Company staff, neither one of them was activated. So they will each get one command. So first sergeant gets one new one. XO gets one new one. All right, first sergeant is gonna he is gonna activate the jeep for one. He's gonna he can move more safely into those open fields now. I didn't like that PC marker being on there earlier. That's why I moved him right back out. So he used his new one. Now my XO can't save that one because he's green. Um, and he already has three saved. So he's going to move on up here. Actually, he's going to move over here because he's going to take the FO with him here in just a minute. In fact, he's going to order the FO right now. 
that was one for him to move over and one more for him to send the FO to right there. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Did I do something out of command? It's because I'm used to um. It's because I'm used to phones and not radios, and I did that illegally. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about that a little while. Ago. Yeah, yeah, because I'm used to phones and not uh, so let's. Yeah, I can't go back and fix that. But yeah, that's my fault. I'm so used to phones. But yeah, he has to have line of sight, which was another reason that hill was so great. Because he could sit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yep, that was a, that was a, um, I tell you what, better than that. Uh, let's wait for general initiative, so I can, I'll fix this in general initiative. Um, hopefully I'll fix it. I get one. So we're going to use that one general initiative. He's going to move out to here. That's my company. Headquarters is moving out. XO can stay back there and push those guys out. See, my plan, which as I joked about, doesn't survive contact with the enemy, and I didn't realize how true that was going to be. This level 2 woods right here, just outside the stationary, is perfect. Headquarters can sit up there, and as long as it's on diagonals and orthogonals, he can command everybody. And then the FO could sit up there, the 50 cal could sit up there, but the Germans are smart, they mind it, so... Yeah, perfect place for my feel. All right, sorry about the mistake, but it won't be the last one. All right, enemy activity. Oddly enough, that's right. We still have no enemy. Uh, higher headquarters. Let's see if they do something nasty here. No headquarters event. All right. No enemies to check activity on, so we'll go straight to the vehicle. The first sergeant's going to drive the jeep to here and hang out. Combat, there are no pin markers to remove. VOF, no fire missions. Now, evaluate potential contacts. We have two A's that we're sitting on up here. One in the Orchard Grove and row two, column one. Uh... Yeah, I could take the MG, but I didn't load it, so I'm going to push him out on, on foot. And then I have the farm here on row 2, column 3. So I'm going to call the Orchard Grove number 1. I'm going to call the farm number 2. We'll draw a random card to see which one's first. It is the Orchard Grove. Now, we remember from earlier that with an A under just the contact level of activity, it's 7 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ha! Uh, I told you it's always the last one. Always the last one. So we have a contact over there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one and look under the ten. That's a five of ten. Go to the briefing book, page five. Look under potential contact A. Five is a defensive position plus. Package 10. We'll scroll up to page 3. Alright, that is, uh, he's not going to be spotted. That's uh, a squad, and then a squad plus a leader. Now, the squads in this one are drawn randomly because some of them have squad LMGs and some of them do not. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to draw the solo squad, and I'm going to set him right here in the middle. So, it's a rifle guy. And then we're going to draw a card and see where he's placed. All right, it's a 9 out of 10, so we'll go back to our, our briefing book, which for some reason just shut down. Yes, sir. Yeah, I drew randomly. 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the guy who designed the module, um, I'll introduce you to him sometime. He put a, a random draw pile up there. Yeah, I put all nine different squads up there. I think six of them are rifle types and three of them are LMG types. And so we just, uh, we played the numbers there. We got lucky. All right, I drew a nine out of ten. So I'm back on page five in the briefing book under unit placement. And it's going to tell me this squad's going to be to my right front at max line of sight. All right, so where am I? I am over here in the Orchard Grove. And my maximum line of sight, my line of sight ends to my right front right here in this other Orchard Grove. All right, if everybody going to follow me to the briefing book for a second, I'm going to show you something. On page five, uh, Mission 1 Enemy Information, the first chart under Mission Details, you'll notice the fourth item says Cover Marker Trenches. What that means is when you go to a package on the table, if it does not specify cover, so like in this case it just says squad, squad plus leader, then it is placed in the default cover for the mission. So that squad that I just placed is going to be placed in trenches. The squad and leader that gets placed in a minute is also going to be placed in trenches. Uh, you'll notice, for instance, package 8, which we had earlier, specified under foxholes, so we placed them in foxholes. Uh, package 4 and 5 say under cover, which means a plus 1 cover marker. So that's what all that notation means. So this guy is going to have some trenches. Uh, and we're going to take his potential contact marker and move it up here where he is and flip it over. Because he is not spotted. So he will be firing back at us. And he has small arms. If you see on his counter there, it has an S, which means he produces a small arms volume of fire. And we need to place a PDF, a primary direction of fire marker, right here between the cards. And I'll rotate that baby around. And there we go. Now we're not finished with the contact, because now we'll need to draw another squad. And this time we got one with a light machine gun. And go up to the pieces, Germans, leaders, and just grab a leader. All right, now these guys will draw a card for. See where they're going to be placed. We we'll look under the 10, and it is 10 of 10. So we go back to the briefing book. Look on page 5 under unit placements. 10 of 10 is also right front and maximum line of sight. Now, we can't place in there. That's not legal. Uh, the only time they can be placed on the card together is if there's a plus symbol, like, let's see, package number, uh, like package number, let me find one. There we go, package 18. Is a light machine gun team plus an 81 millimeter mortar section. Those are on the same card, uh, but this doesn't have a plus, has a slash. They have to be placed on different cards. So we will draw again. Oop, we'll reshuffle. We'll draw again. Look at the 10. The 10 says it's a 1, which in the briefing book tells us that a 1 of 10 is per package table placement. So we'll go back to the package table. It says on adjacent cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go look at the map and see where legally on an adjacent card he could be placed. There's only really one choice. He can't be placed in the hedgerow bocage directly to our, I'll call it east, because we already have guys there. So he's going to have to be placed right there on that level 2 farm. So we'll take these guys. Move that out of the way. I'm going to need to grab another contact marker out of the stack here and flip it. So he's also hidden. Let me clone my PDF. They're firing at us. Now that light machine gun, if you'll notice, that light machine gun squad has an automatic weapons volume of fire. So I'm going to delete this small arms one and replace it with automatic weapons because it's always the the most effective fire that counts. And so we're receiving fire from uh, D 
different uh, two different directions. There's at least two PDFs coming in the car, so that also is going to mean there's a crossfire, which is another minus one. The last thing I need to do is I need to mark this light machine gun squad. We will track their ammo, and I will label them ammo six because the German light machine guns in this um, in this mission they get six points of ammo. Oh, trenches. Got to place them in his trenches. There. All right. Now we got some bad guys. Yeah, and we're definitely engaged, which is going to change the draw. This is why you choose them randomly, because it's a, a activity level is dynamic, so it changes immediately to engaged. Now we'll check that other potential contact A, the one that's left over there in the farm. But we'll notice instead of drawing seven cards this time, we draw five. What you want to bet, all five of them say contact on. There's one. There's a reshuffle. There's two. We already have a contact. Three, four, five. So the first one said contact on it. So we'll draw a card, look at the 10, it's a 1. Go to the briefing book, page 5, 1 of 10 under A, oh goody, <laughs> is a sniper. And you go up, sniper is undercover, so he's going to be placed under plus 1 marker somewhere. Let's find out where. A 10 of 10. Dang it, I did it again. I keep Xing out in my briefing book. Under the plot. Thank you. Right front at max, which is going to put him in this farm right here. So let me pull out the sniper. Germans. There's that jerk. All right, he's going to end up right there. He is not spotted. Per the package table, it said place under cover, which means that dude right there. If it said nothing, he'd be in trenches. Per the uh, default cover, if it said no cover or foxholes or whatever, we would do that. All right, now he's going to target a random guy in that card that triggered him. Uh, yeah, it's getting good now, Jim. But uh, there's only one guy in there. And so let me get my PDF out. He's firing back at the guy that triggered him. He will place a sniper volume of fire. Now, it's going to be a random guy every turn, but again, there's only one guy, so it's obviously him. And then everybody else on the card would be under the effects of a small arms volume of fire. That's how your sniper works. All right, so there's our contact markers. And we don't get to fire. All right, combat effects. And combat is, yeah, they can run you down in a hurry. Um, <coughs> combat is simultaneous. And so it doesn't matter what order you do it in. So I uh, like Chris. It's funny, Chris. I was watching your videos. He said you go left to right, bad guys first. I do basically the same thing, but there's no bad guys to do here. So we will start left to right in the Orchard Grove, do a little math. The good for us is the plus one. Yes. Go ahead. Hey, Ricky, go real ahead. quick. The sniper... When it was placed in cover, that wouldn't be under, like, building cover? Nope. Uh, it's in the errata. Let me check the errata. Yeah, let me only check have the one cover yeah, marker on. I have it spelled out um, in the errata. I s 
right here. All right. All right, when enemy force makes no mention of cover, place it in default cover. When it says under fortification type, place units under that. When it says in cover, place it under plus one cover marker. That's what the errata says. So he goes under plus one. So, so my, 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 question, my question to you then is you have a little one on the building down there for cover on that card. So you can never use the building because you can only have one cover. It's only nope. going to be the plus one cover nope. and nope. not the light or strong. Nope. That's it. That's it because in World War II missions, uh, the urban cover, uh, but there's a 60% chance you find, in, isn't that right, 60%, a three of five chance you find in a, a strong building. The other two is just, I think it's just standard cover. And so he didn't, uh, this guy obviously is hiding in the trees somewhere, and that's the only cover marker that will go on there. So... Yep, we're out a lot when we move on objective two. We're gonna we're not gonna have as good a cover as we hope to have. Uh, the question, Tony, for the log was uh, when the package table says that a unit appears quote under cover and it just used the term cover um, when he's in an urban area like that or urban uh, urban cover area like the farm would he be placed in a building? But the errata is specific that when it says under cover, he goes under a plus one cover marker. So I assume that maybe with the next module, I don't know this for sure, but I can imagine because of one of the campaigns at least that uh, there are probably going to be mentions in strong building, you know, where they're specifically placed in a strong building. So because um, there's going to be significantly more urban in one of the campaigns. So now you, campaigns. Uh, you also have the light building uh, counter too. Yeah. Yeah, and I can't, the table's right here. It's under um, miscellaneous urban cover probability. In World War II, it's just a 60% chance of a strong building. The other 40% is plus one cover. It's not until you get to Korea and Vietnam that the light buildings come into play. All right, so he's firing back at us, uh, uh, but we're starting off here on the left. Did that answer? Yeah. Okay. Back here on the left in the orchard slash grove, we've got a plus one uh, for the card itself. Uh, we have, and that's the only good part, we have minus one for automatic weapons coming in, minus one because we're under crossfire, and then a minus two because we're exposed. So that's a whopping a minus four to plus one is a minus three. So let me discard this card. We're going to draw one. Minus three is a hit, which is not a big surprise. So we will draw another and look under line. And unfortunately, it says they're PP. So two steps are become paralyzed. And we only have two steps there. So I'll place two paralyzed guys. I will right click on this guy and hit send to units eliminated. We can hopefully rebuild him later, but don't count on it. And then these paralyzed guys, of course, are pinned because anytime you get hit, you're pinned as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, my standard play is starting to come back here. I was getting a little lucky for me. All right, this guy over in the farm with a sniper bearing down on him. Sniper VOF is a minus three. Um, farm is a plus two. Plus we have a, a minus two for being exposed. So our exposed state and the farm cancel out. So it's, quote, just the minus three from the sniper, which in this case we get fortunate. Uh, he pins us. Whew. discard that card. That ends combat effects. I'm going to go to cleanup, which I'm going to decrement the ammo of the LMG squad over here from 6 down to 5. And they're going to stay around a while. And that leader being with him is going to allow him to draw an extra card for whatever he does. Effectively, it makes him veteran effectively, so that's going to be a pain. 
All right, cleanup's going to remove our exposed markers. Now, fortunately, we've got third platoon in almost its entirety in a pretty good spot uh, to do some spotting and then to lay down some fire, even though we moved in there illegally. And um, we won't hold that against ourselves. We're all ready to turn five. And we've got a ways to go. All right, questions? Thanks, Dave. This is fine for me. I mean, what time? Yes, yeah, 11 o'clock here.